Good evening, and welcome to another edition of the Dog Walk. I finally downloaded some of the videos off of my phone to make some more room since I ran out of space yesterday. And I realized that it seems like my phone, uh, being in night mode, made the uh, kind of focus all jittery and blurry. So. Hopefully that's fixed now. Uh, we'll check for tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, I really don't know what I can do other than continue to try to fiddle around with more settings until I get it right. Uh, but I appreciate uh, your patience. And uh, for those of you who actually were able to watch the previous videos, well, uh, good on you. I pro I'm not sure that I would have if uh if i wasn't the one making the content but uh, but i appreciate it and hopefully we're, we'll do better from now on so uh i'm honestly not sure you start this way you start this way i'm not sure where the uh, recording uh ended last time uh, when i ran out of space so uh <laughs> I'll just uh, maybe try to recap the, the last the last point that I wanted to, that was making, which is that uh, uh, right I was talking about gardening and the other advantages of it and the connection. I really wanted to re-emphasize how um, you know when you start to see you know uh, other a second use a second life to uh, items that others would uh, normally discard or would readily discard um, which hopefully I caught some of my rant about why I think that's a bad thing for our society to live in a world where everything is disposable because if everything is disposable everyone is disposable and that's just not really the world that I want to live in is it the worst world is it not a good one well i don't know uh to go back to moral relativism right i think that every point of view is deserve ha, it deserves to be examined right even if i don't think uh it's for me right it still has value so anyway um the point that I wanted to make is uh, uh, the last point I wanted to make on the topic was that when you do see those other uses, you also he see a lot more how everything is connected. You know how that those kitchen scraps that you throw out of the table feed your compost, which feeds the worms, which feed you know. Uh, the soil that you will then use to grow your own food, which will then, uh, you know, feed you in that big cycle. But there's also all the other, uh, I guess, like side or parallel processes that go on uh, that you start to notice, right? You start to notice those, you know, beneficial insects or predators that, that, that help you in your in your garden or uh that you know keep the the bad things away you start to figure out how to live a little bit more with those pesky squirrels and things like that right you uh you start to understand and appreciate a little bit more how everything is connected how it's all one big cycle even if it's just from you know reusing the water or recovering the water that uh your rainwater so that you don't have to spend as much money on uh city municipal irrigation right is he okay or is it too cold for you not sure you're a little bit behind it's not that cold out but the ground might be a bit cold we'll keep an eye on you huh uh so so yeah i think that's uh and that all loops back to another one of my previous points about, you know, expanding your in-group so that it's not more than just yourself or your family or your immediate friends. But 
you know, ideally it expands further than even just uh, your fellow humans down uh, down the street or in your country or this or that uh, to all in humanity and maybe even some of the other organisms that uh, share the planet with us. So anyway, uh, I think I've uh, made my point and hopefully at least in, at the surface level linked it to some of the ideas I had previously shared. Uh, but uh, to get now finally to the topic that I wanted to talk about yesterday, um, I kind of decided to change the approach. Uh, I was first going to explain uh, uh, a little bit more about my experience in uh, risk management. As an aerospace engineer, uh, it's something that we have to do on a constant basis uh, that perhaps, you know, the people who don't work in the field might not realize or understand, right? Uh, a great example would be uh, that Boeing 737 panel that just flew off and how you assess uh, the risk for that. So I was going to explain uh, some of my <laughs> uh, experiences in, the, in risk, uh, risk management or risk assessment. Uh, but like I said, I think I'm going to shift gears a little bit. I do have a lot of anecdotes that I want to share about that. I think that one of the biggest problems with risk <coughs> and risk management in any field really, whether that's assessing the safety of an aircraft or, you know, determining uh, how much leverage you can put on your financial assets uh for your next investment it's that people you know everyone so many people have main character syndrome uh to quote Aslan gold there um it might be a bit of survivor bias this or that but everyone kind of always grows up or thinks whether consciously or subconsciously that it's always going to happen to someone else right you know, the bad stuff doesn't happen to me or I'm not the one who's going to be unlucky and who's going to, you know, get a concussion uh, out snowboarding or I'm not the one who's going to blah, 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 right? You get it. It's always someone, someone else, right? So people assess risk. People think they understand risk, but everyone is always shocked and appalled uh, when <laughs> risk actually realizes or happens, right? Sorry, uh, that's a uh, risk management terminology. When a risk realizes means that the, th the thing that you described as a risk actually happened, right? Uh, <clears throat> so it's astounding to me how I, even at the highest level, you know, like governments or this or that, so I'll give one example uh, um, many people may be familiar with the Joint Strike Fighter program. Uh, that's a big thing in Canada. I know, you know, U.S., uh, Australia, uh, U.K., etc. There's a few other, right? There's other countries who are involved in it. Well, uh, that program was set back by half, at least half a decade, if not probably more, in Canada and almost scrapped which would have been a hu anyway a huge uh, <laughs> i'll keep my opinions on that sorry i can't really sp speak on that since uh, uh, uh professional uh, professional rules i'll say uh but let's just say that one of the things that almost had me laughing was that one of the bigger risks that was described on this program was that it was a developmental program and that the developmental costs and risks would be shared by all the partner nations right and the government of canada decision makers signed off on that and they agreed to that that risk that hey if suddenly uh, the UK pulls out or if suddenly you know the US does this or that or if suddenly the exchange rate tanks or right like basically if anyone any other country 
decides to change anything, well, Canada will have to adjust. That was a risk that was expressed, but everyone was like, oh no, the, right? Like you, you say you understand the risk, but really in the back of your mind as a decision maker, they're probably thinking, oh, the UK will never, or the US will never pull back on this program, right? They're much bigger than us, blah, blah, blah. And guess what happened, right? Changes in other countries lead to ballooning costs uh, for the program for Canada. And now all of a sudden, cue all the politicians to come in and say this is unaffordable. And they reevaluate the entire process and all of that stuff, right? Um, I'm sorry, but the risk that you said you accepted and that you thought you understood happened. And now you're acting as if, you know, no one could have ever predicted this. Or no one knew when, oh my god, you need to... Come on, give me a break. One thing you need to realize is that even if there's a chance in one in one billion that something's going to happen, well, if you run a billion reps, it is going to happen, right? So... If you do fly a billion times with your aircraft, well, eventually something's going to happen, right? So, anyway, um, again, I'm going on an aside, uh, going down on a tangent and not talking about the topic that I wanted to talk about. So, let's pull it back. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to introduce this, so I guess I'll just go ahead and do it. Global warming. Um, the risk management aspect came in. I wanted to discuss, you know, one of the big tools that you do, or the basic way to assess risk, is you quantify both the probability and impact of something happening, right? So, how likely it is uh, that, you know, the gas main underneath your house will suddenly explode because someone drills into it. Uh, under your house well probably not very likely but what's the impact of that your entire house blows up so it's a very high impact right so you can quantify that risk and you can weigh it against let's say something that's a lot more likely like what's the chance that uh, if you're if you live right here that people or dogs or whatever are going to walk on your lawn here and damage it. Well, it's a lot more likely than your gas main bursting, right? But the impact is a lot less. That being said, if there's a chance one in a thousand years that the gas main is going to blow out and it's going to cost you a million dollars to replace your, your house, well, you can compare that to say, hey, in a thousand years, if I spend, you know, $10 on grass seed per year, well, turns out these risks are actually, in the end, have the same kind of financial value to me. They, they, one's super likely, but low impact. The other's, uh, you know, unlikely, but super high impact. And, uh... Or, you know, medium and medium. Sorry, Misra, wait back. Wait, 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 Misra. Need to pick up. Um, or, you know, medium and medium, and it all cancels out. So that's how you assess risk, and that's how you determine, you know, what's what you should be fixing first. Uh, same thing should be true in other fields, like let's say if, if you work in... Uh, bug fixing or uh, troubleshooting or a uh, customer service or something like that uh, uh, you probably have to be uh, with the same type of thing right? you know, you know, and you always get the most money for your buck basically so you need to figure that out um, so that's the one way that you can kind of uh, to bring it back to climate change or global warming, that oh oh, um, 
the the point that I was going to make related to that is that you know what is regardless of the likelihood of global warming being true or not Mr. Daisy sorry my uh, the leashes are all tangled uh, 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 that's what happens when you have to scoop stoop down to pick up dog business while holding a phone while holding two leashes while trying to also tie the poop bag but anyway uh, all right okay so anyway point is that uh, uh, even if you are like the 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 impact of global warming climate science all of that stuff however you want to label it uh, being true is so much higher than uh, the impact the loss <sighs> sorry Mistra is also pooping I think I'm gonna pause and resume in a minute Oof. okay we're back and we've got Mistra's business also picked up uh, so yeah like I was saying uh, let's say you uh, do not believe in climate change Wait, did I drop a oh yeah I dropped a bag girls sorry Mistra Sorry, <laughs> he's not so strong. I have to pull really hard to get her to budge. And sometimes, <laughs> when she budges, anyway. Um, so yeah, let's say you don't believe in it. Uh, even if there's a you know one percent chance that you might be wrong. The consequence. My God, you saw what's going on today. Sorry, people are going to think that I treat you like an animal. <laughs> no, kidding. Uh, Mistra is so strong, I don't know what's going on today. Anyway, um, yeah, so the consequence of you being wrong in your thought that global warming isn't a thing is so much higher how can you like even if there's a one percent chance that you are wrong the impact of that is so high that you should still be doing something about it i'm not saying you know become become captain planet but try to change a few habits just a little bit um just in the off chance that you might be right because hey let's say the opposite is true what's the consequence of that right and that's kind of the approach that I actually want to take to discuss this and I want you to imagine a square where there's really kind of four possibilities right either uh, you believe in global warming I'll say I'll use that term climate change insert whatever term is most appropriate uh, uh, either you believe in it or you don't so that's kind of you know one row and then for the columns in your little four square box you'll have uh, it's true or it isn't right so one's your, one side is your belief and the other side is the fact right so let's say we start with uh, you believe that climate change is true uh, or is a thing and you are right well then great job hopefully you're actually acting along with your beliefs and not just you know walking the the walk and not just uh talking the talk and uh good on you like uh great right you're 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 in the positive here uh, let's say you don't you 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 still you believe in global warming but global warming is not a thing well then what's the negative impact of that uh, to you uh, maybe you'll end up spending a little bit more money 
on some of your produce maybe you'll you know you'll have some inconveniences that you wouldn't have if you were ready and willing to just you know throw out your plastic oh shit there's a I'll have to take this there's a dog coming sorry I had to pause there was another dog coming and uh, he's not being a rescue uh, sometimes uh, he gets oh Daisy you're stuck in the go go just keep going just keep going oh no I've been trying to teach her to understand how the leash works for a year and a half now Daisy silly girl you're not as smart as your sister Misa figured it out in a few weeks but anyway um yeah, Misa barks a lot anyway, because she's a rescue and uh, she gets excited by other dogs. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's say uh, my point was that if you do believe in global warming and it isn't a thing, the worst consequence is maybe a little bit of financial inconvenience for you. Although, uh, on the other side, you know, once you start to actually do the math and realize how much you can save uh, by you know driving a, a car that is not an SUV or a pickup that burns you know a million liters per uh, centimeter that you drive uh, you know you end up saving a lot of money that way same thing when you grow your own food uh, same thing even when you prep yourself and let's say you start to put solar panels water catchment system geothermal those are all systems that uh, have a high initial entry cost, but for most of them, nowadays at today's energy prices, it doesn't take that 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 long to recover your investment. And energy prices are only going to keep going up. So anyway, I think it's actually financially advantageous to. Uh, to invest in green but uh, that's a different topic so anyway that's the first first column or first row of your square now the second row is if you don't believe climate change is a thing right uh, and first column is that <coughs> it's true well it doesn't take uh, uh, very smart person to understand what the ramifications of that are uh, really if that's the case only if you are truly completely heartless and not only do you you know only you have to really only care about yourself your own life not even the life of you know your children or your friends or anything like that because you might say I don't care because I'll be gone uh, before global warming actually floods my city okay that might be true but you might not be gone before the next global warming driven tornado hits your town and picks you up but uh that's uh <laughs> anyway uh <coughs> point is that uh only i mean i i can't really speak to someone who would be okay with the fact that they don't believe in global warming but they know that global warming is true and they just don't care and wouldn't want to change their their way of uh, acting once they do understand it is true anyway uh, so basically if you're in that first box there you're screwed and you're screwing everyone else hopefully that's not too strong language because i actually had another word in mind uh, but what's interesting enough is that even in the other case where you do think that global warming uh, is not is a hoax or climate change is not real uh, but also you uh, well but you're right uh, in my mind you're still advantaged by acting as if it was real 
be for all the exact same reasons that I just mentioned above or if you do believe in climate change right uh, and by stopping your indulgences not only will you save some money uh, but hey you might actually uh, realize that it's maybe a better better living better way of living you might become a little bit more happier uh, now that's just speculation uh, I understand big boys want their big trucks room room right and big girls want their makeup but uh, and sorry if that was too gender stereotypical I was trying to make a uh, use hyperbole to illustrate a point uh, please don't crucify me um, but yeah I guess my point is that even if global warming is not a thing uh, it's to your advantage to live like it is don't drive a huge freaking pickup like that for no reason when you're a, a single person just because you're bigger and more you know don't have the mobility uh you can't fit maybe in a smaller car maybe that's why you're getting a pickup anyway uh not that i'm fat shaming or anything but if you start to increase your in-group, expand it, things will be better. Anyway, on that note, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, so that's a very basic, long-winded but basic argument on why even if global warming isn't tr true, uh, you should act as if it is. It's to your personal advantage and to the planets, more importantly. See ya.